Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, we're going to have one of the electrical engineers from Aptera, Ryle, um, explain to us how the uh, inverter unit works and what the various ports do and explain to us a little bit about the benefits of a silicon carbide inverter versus the traditional inverters that are previously used. Um, at the end, I said I get it, but I probably got like 50% of it. At some point, we're gonna have to do a deep dive into this thing and figure it out so that we understand it better. But this was an interesting thing and I learned something by talking to Ralph. so thank you for uh, talking to us and explaining things to us, Ralph. Can you explain to me how this thing works? Like what is what are these ports and okay, stuff? So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so these two are uh, coolant. Um, okay, this is the coolant. Okay. Yeah, one's an inlet, one's an outlet. Okay. And uh, we're using. Because uh, this thing gets hot. Oh yeah. Of course. Okay. Um, this is the DC input. Okay. So from the battery or the PDU, uh -huh. you would uh, have wires that go into here. Okay. It would be positive, negative. Okay. And that will the inverter. What the inverter does is it inverts right? Yeah. From DC to AC. Correct. Um, Good seeing you. So it will go from DC to AC, and AC, there's supposed to be three bus bars here. Um, the AC would come out here? Correct. Okay. And there will be a connector right here, that either goes on this way, uh -huh. or this way. We made it so that we can have it either way. Okay. Um, just for packaging reasons. Okay. And that will go to the motors. And now would this one have separate outputs to each motor? Or is it just one output? So we only have one inverter per motor. Okay, you have an inverter for each Correct. motor. So if you have a three wheel, you have three of these things. Three of those things. I got if you. If we didn't have one inverter per motor, we wouldn't be able to do any like, torque vectoring. Okay. Um, any of that sort. Um, okay. And generally, it's much more safer that way as well. Okay. And, and then, then these are low voltage connectors. Okay. Um, this one goes to uh, the sensors in the motor. Okay. So the position sensor, thermistors. Stuff like that. And okay. This one goes to the main body harness. So okay. 12 volts, CAN bus. Uh huh. Um, this is what. Con this is like controls it then. Like this is like if you press the accelerator or something, this would get the information. So we have another module, a uh -huh. powertrain control unit, uh -huh. um, or a vehicle control unit, as um, what most people uh, on the streets call. Um, that will take inputs of your pedal and your your brake pedals and your acceleration pedal. Uh -huh. And what the vehicle control unit does is it takes that input, makes sure that it's not in error of any sort, making sure that it's correct, and then sending it to the inverter uh -huh. via a torque command. Yeah. And from that torque command, the inverters will decide how much current to output, uh -huh. what phase, based on where the motor is sitting at. at I see. Moment. How like, fast they're spinning as well. Like this thing determines how much power it can get delivered to the motors. Correct. Okay. All the like if this thing is puny, no matter how strong your motors are, you, can, you won't be able to drive it properly. Correct. Okay. So all the vehicle control unit does is ask uh -huh. for a certain amount of torque as yeah. power. Yeah. And then this will provide it. Yeah, this has to deliver. It will decide how much it can output and at what time, what phase. Um, based on the motor's position and all that. So and it also talks, since they're all on the same CAN bus, uh -huh. um, powertrain CAN bus, uh, it also talks to the BMS, it also talks to other components on that bus, uh -huh. making sure that if our battery is not getting too hot, uh -huh. the coolant in the motors are not getting too hot, uh, it would either derate and reduce the amount of actual power okay. output or torque output. Right. So if the, if the motor's overheating, it will know not to like drive it so hard. Correct. Okay. It will make sure that it doesn't start overheating the components. Got it. Power. So how come they don't run DC motors? Very good question. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, because this, this, you lose a lot of heat, which means you're losing energy, right? Yeah. Correct. So if you got rid of the inverter, theoretically more efficient? All day. I mean, there's a, there, I'm sure there's a reason there, that you got to go AC. There are many reasons. Okay. It really depends on the type of DC so motor you're using. Today. You're using a brushed motor, there's uh -huh. going to be a lot of wear and tear. Right. So that um, that's not a thing. And it's going to have like carbon dust everywhere from, right. from those um, uh, Just trying to commutate that entire DC right. motor. DC motors, you have to have 
if you want to go in one direction, uh -huh. you only need to turn it on and off. Okay. But if you want to go in both reverse and forward, uh -huh. you need to make an H bridge. Okay. Which is so the controls harder or something? There's a lot of it's very complicated. Both have different types of controls, uh -huh. um, but in that case, uh -huh. if you want to go forward and reverse, uh -huh. you still need something to do all this. Okay. You still need this, the, the MOSFETs or uh -huh. IGBTs, however you want to do the switching. Right. Um, and this is a silicon carbide correct. inverter. And what was the inverter before silicon carbide? So before, when we were um, in our prototype vehicles, uh -huh. we were using um, off-the-shelf IGBT inverters. Uh, IGBT? IGBT. What does that mean? Insulated gate bipolar <laughs> transistor. Okay. Um, and what's the advantage of the silicon carbide over so those? So silicon carbide, the silicon carbide MOSFETs uh -huh. are a different structure compared to IGBTs. Okay. Um, in effect, the IGBTs are more lossy with a higher RDS on compared to MOSFET. So they're, they're less efficient? Oh, okay. When you put enough amperage through it, uh -huh. uh, there are I squared R losses. Okay. Um, so if it has a higher RDS on, uh -huh. which is when uh, the amount of current going through the transistor when it's turned on, uh -huh. um, you have an exponential curve of losses. I see. As you increase current. So what the MOSFETs do is that they have a lower resistance Okay. So even if it's exponential, it's still lowered by how much resistance is in the transistor. I got it. I got it. Oh, great. Thanks. That's awesome. I, I learned. So, yeah, at the end, I said I got it. But let's be honest, I didn't really get it. I got it at a very rudimentary level. Um, at some point, I'm going to have to do a deep dive into these um, inverters for EVs and MOSFETs and uh, silicon carbide MOSFETs and see if I can actually understand a little more of it. But anyway, that was very informative for me. I learned a lot, even though I didn't quite get 100% of what he was talking about. And um, it made me feel very good about the decisions that they were making um, at Aptera. And it looks like they have a really, it looked, the casing looked really cool. And it seems like people really know what they're talking about and they're doing a great job. Um, so thanks for watching any comments below if you understand this better, please get on discord and maybe you can explain it to me um, and uh, Thanks as always to our supporting members and have a great day everyone